أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله I bear witness there is no God but God and Muhammad was his last prophet and slave servant My name is Sekou Odinga and I am a former member of the Black Panther Party and a former political prisoner of war I was released on parole on November 25th, 2014, after serving 33 years in prison. In October 1981, I was captured and charged with multiple so-called crimes by two jurisdictions, New York State and the U.S. federal government. Among them was aiding in the liberation of Asada Shakur, the expropriation of an armored truck, and the attempted murder of police. For those who don't know who Osada Shakur is, in 1973, she was a 25-year-old revolutionary woman riding on the New Jersey Turnpike with two of her close revolutionary comrades when they were stopped and attacked by New Jersey state troopers. Osada was shot in the back with her hands in the air as she had been ordered to do by the troopers. An all-white jury found her guilty of the death of one of the attacking troopers killed with his own gun and sentenced to life in prison. Prior to that, she had been tortured and tried numerous times on multiple charges where she was always either found not guilty or the trial ended in, hung, in a hung jury. An opportunity presented itself for us to free Asada Shakur, a political prisoner who we felt was unjustly imprisoned so we, did it. so we did that. I felt good about the opportunity. I felt good about the opportunity to do this. But there was some nervousness in knowing what we were doing was dangerous and would be viewed as a criminal act. We knew the powers that be would try to stop us. We were doing something that had never been done successfully in our movement before. We thought our chances of being successful were good based on our planning, but we felt like it was our, and we felt like it was our responsibility to do this. At the time, I was a soldier of the Black Liberation Army. The Black Liberation Army was part of the Black Liberation Movement. The Black Liberation Army saw itself as a protector and defender of the black community and against constant police terror, violence, and murder. As a young activist, I was inspired by Malcolm X and thought it necessary that the black community have a self-defense response and capability against the rampant poverty, hunger, injustice, and state violence. I was found guilty in federal court of the liberation of Asada Shakur and expropriation of an armored truck. I was sentenced to 40 years and fined $50,000 fines on those two charges. For defending myself by shooting back at police, I was found guilty of attempted murder of police in state court and sentenced to 25 years to life to run separately from the 40 years. I was fortunate that I wasn't murdered in the street, as happened to my close friend and comrade, Um Tayari Sundiata, who was with me when I was captured. It was her involvement in the Black Liberation Movement that led to Asada being criminalized and imprisoned. That is how and why she became a political prisoner of war. Today, I want to speak a little more about political prisoners in the US. What or who is a political prisoner? A political prisoner is someone arrested and convicted for their political activity, their political thoughts, ideas, words, or support. You might be thinking, no one becomes a political prisoner in the US. The truth is, <laughs> anyone organizing or struggling for their people can become a target for political imprisonment if the powers that be consider them a threat. An example of this is Asada Shakur. Another example is Sundiata Coley, who was with Asada Shakur during that New Jersey Turnpike incident I mentioned earlier. Both were members of the Black Panther Party who got up 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning to feed school children before they went to school. Sometimes it was the only good meal they had all day. 
both worked to help welfare mothers get the assistance they were entitled. Both worked on community housing, political education, and health programs. Asada is a graduate of BMCC Cooney, and before joining the Black Panther Party, she worked in a hospital. Sundiata is a mathematician who worked at NASA, helping to teach math to future astronauts. Asada has been living in exile in Cuba for almost 40 years and is admired as a legendary freedom fighter in social justice movements around the world. Sundiata is 80 years old and continues to be held in a federal prison facility and has been denied parole numerous times. Political prisoners were targeted by COINTELPRO, the FBI's counterintelligence program that worked with local police to monitor, infiltrate, attack, and in some cases, kill activists. Fred Hampton and Mark Clark from Chicago are such examples. Hampton was the chairman of the Illinois chapter of the Black Panther Party. In 1969, the Chicago Police Department sent an informant agent into Fred's home to drug him. Then the police, along with the FBI, came and shot up the house, murdering Fred Hampton and Mark Clark in their sleep. These are established facts revealed in the lawsuit the family won against the city of Chicago, Cook County, and the federal government. Today, COINTELPRO continues under Homeland Security. The Patriot, the Patriot Act and National Security Agencies, etc., whereby activists are still targeted, monitored, and entrapped. Recently, the FBI's Counterterrorism Division has declared, quote, black identity extremists as threats, end quote, which can include anyone fighting to protect black lives. Like many of you, our political prisoners were young activists when they got involved with the struggle for the survival and freedom of their people. Jalil Muta King was only 19 years old when he was captured and imprisoned for fighting for his people. Today he is a senior citizen who has endured the last 46 years of his life in prison. He is one of the longest held political prisoners in the world, but he hasn't given up. He continues to believe that freedom-loving Americans will do the right thing by standing up and demanding that he and other political prisoners be released. Enough is enough. Let's get together and demand their freedom. As Che Guevara says, a true revolutionary is motivated by great love for the people. This is especially true of our political prisoners who continue to struggle to make the world a better place despite being behind bars. Jalil Mutakim initiated an international human rights program. 15 or so years ago, Herman Bell co-created a community garden program that still distributes local produce to people. Dr. Matulu Shakur continues to motivate and organize people to establish alternative health care in their communities. All our political prisoners continue to be concerned and involved in what's going on in our communities. Of course, the U.S. government has claimed and continue to claim that the United States has no political prisoners, but that's clearly a lie. All freedom struggles against oppressive governments produce political prisoners. This is a historical fact. We can go back as far as Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, who was himself a political prisoner of the Roman Empire. Just as Leonard Peltier, Afia Siddiqui, and 13 members of the Black Panther Party are political prisoners of the U.S. Empire, our political prisoners are sentenced to long, indeterminate sentences, with most serving up to and more than 30 to 50 years in prison. It is the state's intent to take these political prisoners who would dare to struggle away from the masses and lock them up for decades to, to keep their revolutionary example hidden. I think it is important for people to know that political prisoners are part of movements. They do not exist in a vacuum. Political prisoners come from the American Indian Movement, the Black Liberation Movement, the, the Puerto Rican Independence Movement, the white anti-imperialist movement, and every other movement for human rights. 
these movements have been criminalized by the United States. This means we have a stake in knowing and supporting political prisoners. If we don't, how can we expect our youth to join in the struggle to make the world a better place if they know that they will probably be forgotten if arrested and imprisoned for struggling? Recently, we saw Obama recognize U.S. held political prisoners when he released Oscar Lopez Rivera and Chelsea Manning as he exited the office of president. But this is an anomaly. What we usually see are the political forces of the state lined up against the release of our political prisoners. The New Jersey Parole Board appealed the court-ordered release of Sundiata Coley all the way to the state Supreme Court and imposed a 15-year wait before he can reappear again when he is 95 years old. In New York, Robert Seth Hayes, Jalil Mutakim, and Herman Bell all have been denied the parole more than six, seven times. And despite being granted parole, Veronica Bowles is still held in a federal facility because Alberto Gonzalez, Attorney General under George W. Bush, imposed himself in the parole process, instructing the prison warden not to release him. That was more than 12 years ago, and Veronica is still being held today. This is illegal because Veronica has finished his time and is now serving time without any charges or any conviction. But the prison, the courts, law enforcement, the politicians, and we, the people ourselves, have all allowed this criminal act to stand. Those who struggle with, to help me make my freedom a reality became like family to me. Some of them were very young at the time. They were with me as they grew up had children, and their children relate to me as I am part of their family today. I am Baba Tseku to them. It is a real inspiring and loving relationship. They have shown much love for me, and I love them very much. They helped me survive my imprisonment and gain my freedom. Without them, I wouldn't be here today. Let's all become educated and stand up for our political prisoners. Visit the Jericho Movement dot com for addresses to write political prisoners and if you can send money join jericho join the northeast political prisoner coalition and or other political prisoner support committees challenge the myth that political political prisoners and prisoners of war don't exist in the u.s among your friends and networks and call for the release and freedom of political prisoners and prisoners of war Nowhere in the world do freedom and justice-loving people struggling against oppression forget their freedom fighters, forget their political prisoners. We must stand up for our political prisoners and prisoners of war and demand their release. We need their strength, knowledge, and commitment out here working with us to make this a better world. We have a responsibility not to forget those who fought for us. We owe that to them and their families because they sacrificed so much for us. That's the least we can do for them. Let's free all our political prisoners and prisoners of war. Freedom of all. Thank you.